Hey everybody and welcome back to another episode of Tech Tuesdays. Today we're going to be going over how to set up your HB Tuner's 3.x scanner to read injector duty cycle. If you guys have been watching our earlier Tech Tuesday videos, we did one not long ago on how to tell if you're out of fuel injector. Now during that video, we referenced a lot of injector duty cycle and how to read and how to use it to tell if you're out of injector. Now if you're using the provided layouts that we have on our website for Ford or GM, injector duty cycle is already going to be set up for you, but let's say that you're not using them and you need to know how to actually set it up. So there's something that you're going to need to know, and that is that it's not really a PID and something you can record. So if you were to go into the channels list and type in injector duty cycle, you wouldn't actually be able to find it. And this is because it's a calculation that HP Tuners is making in the background. It's taking one, two, or three PIDs and it's calculating them together to give you that injector duty cycle number. So now that you understand that, let's go into the scanner so you can get a better representation of how to actually set it up. So the example that we're going to use today is for a Corvette, but the process that I'm going to show you here carries over for both Fords as well as GMs. So don't worry if you are at home and you have a Ford, the process I'll show you here, even though it's on a Corvette, is exactly the same. So what I've done is, is I've gone ahead and selected the uh, GM Gen 4 layout uh, for channels that the Tunely School has created. And I've done the same for GM Gen 4 chart versus time that the Tuning School has created. So these are both things that you can download off of our website. And like I said before, normally they would already have injector duty cycle in them, but I've gone ahead and removed the parameters we need so I can show you exactly how to set them up. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the channel section and we're going to right click and go to add channel. So we need a couple of different channels in here to actually be able to record injector duty cycle. So the first thing that we're actually going to need is very simple, and most people are already going to have it, and that is engine RPM. So in this text filter box, we'll type in RPM. And you see here we'll select this first engine RPM SAE. This one should read fairly well for us, so we'll double click on it. And we can see it got added in the background over here. So now the next thing that we're going to go ahead and select is injector pulse width. Now injector pulse width is a reading of how open the injectors are at that exact moment. So what we'll do is we'll type in INJ. And the reason we type in INJ instead of injector is because they're usually listed as INJ period and then pulse width. So for the Corvette that we're working on, we can select to read pulse width for bank one and bank two but it's not actually necessary to select both. By simply selecting one, we will actually still be able to get the calculated injector duty cycle. Now on Fords, they typically only have one. It's an average of both banks. You can't really read bank one and bank two on a Ford, not that I've seen anyways. So, but for what we're doing right now, we'll go ahead and select both, but just realize that you only really need to select one. So we'll double click on bank one, and we'll double click on bank two. At this point, we have all of the PIDs we need inside the channels area to actually read injected duty cycle. So we can close the channel selector window, and then we'll go over to our chart versus time area so we can add injector duty cycle over here. So we're going to right click, we're going to go to charts layouts, and then in this first group here, we will input injector duty cycle. So we'll have to go to the add series icon, which is right here. Once we're here, we will need to change the parameter to injector duty cycle. So simply left click there, and then we will type in the text filter box, INJ, and you see we've got a lot of options for INJ, and it's hard to know which one to choose. And so what we will do is we will click on the show parameters only backed by channels. What this means is I only will get things I can record because I'm already recording it here and it will help narrow down our options greatly. So by clicking on this gear, it narrowed down our options a lot, and now I can go down here and see that I've got injector duty cycle. Now this is listed under the math, or maths, section, and the reason it's listed under the maths section is because a math is something HP Tuners is calculating in the background. 
So we can always locate this under the math section, no matter whether it's a Ford or a GM. So once we've located injector duty cycle, we'll simply double click on it. We'll make sure everything is set up how we like here. We're reading in a percentage for our unit, which is exactly what we want. We're reading from zero to 100, which is what it will display in visually. And then the color is white. And what we'll do is we'll change this color to blue because we can already see that cylinder air mass is in white. So we'll simply click on the color box, select blue, then click OK. And now we can close the chart display layout editor window. We see we have injector duty cycle here. At this point, whether you're following along with a Ford or a GM, they will both be ready to scan the vehicle and read injector duty cycle. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you're able to go to your HP Tuner scanner and actually record injector duty cycle now. If you have any questions, then feel free to contact us here at the Tuning School. And for more high-performance tuning knowledge, make sure you like us on Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and as always, stay tuned.